Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on seedless plants. The objectives for today's lesson are, number one, compare and contrast seedless non-vascular plants and seedless vascular plants. Number two, why are seedless plants important to the health of the environment? And number three, what can seedless plants tell us about Earth's climate millions of years ago? Let's start by reviewing plant classification. First of all, scientists try to classify and put different plants into groups according to their physical characteristics and uh, their evolutionary history. For right now, we're just going to talk about two different groups, the vascular plants and the non-vascular plants. Vascular plants have what we call vascular tissue inside of their roots, stems, and leaves. And that vascular tissue transports all the water, nutrients, and food that the plant needs in order to survive. In general, out of all plants, uh, that we have here on Earth, 93% of those plants are vascular plants because that transportation tissue, that system of getting the water and food through the plant is very efficient and it allows the plants to survive on land in different climates uh, around the world. That's why we have plants everywhere. Now vascular plants, that plant tissue uh, can have, vascular plants can have seeds or they can be seedless plants. Non-vascular plants, however, are, never have seeds, so they're seedless only plants. Now, vascular seedless plants have a special name and they're called pteridophytes, and we'll talk about those later. And non-vascular plants are called bryophytes, and we'll discuss those also. So just as a quick review, all plants uh, have a common ancestor, and that ancestor is green algae. Green algae lived in the sea, or lived in areas with water, and uh, from that green algae, we have evolved these different structures to help plants to survive all over the world, which is why we have these different groups, such as the non-vascular plants and the vascular plants with out seeds and the vascular plants with seeds. Let's first talk about the bryophytes. Those bryophytes, again, are seedless and non-vascular. They do not have the transportation tissue, and they do not have true stems, leaves, or roots. They do have other structures that may look like those stems, leaves, and roots, but they just don't work uh, as efficiently because, of no, because there's no vascular tissue. Bryophytes do not have flowers, fruits, or cones either. Those are structures that are uh, just for the vascular plants, um, and specifically the vascular plants that have seeds. Now, the bryophytes are important because they, first of all, were the first descendants of the green algae, which is the common ancestor for all plants. Bryophytes uh, also play a big role in helping to maintain our environment, which we'll discuss later. Um, in general, bryophytes, uh, in order to make more bryophytes, they use what we call spores instead of seeds. These are the reproductive organs of the plants, which help the plant to make more of its own kind. Spores are just basically tiny, waterproof, reproductive cells. And in general, for bryophytes and other plants, those spores um, basically are moved by water and wind to help the reproduction of new plants take place. This is a picture of a uh, bryophyte, and at the top of the bryophyte are the spores. And those spores, of course, will form new bryophytes. Now, bryophytes are classified into three different groups. The first group is the mosses. Then we have liverworts and hornworts, and we'll discuss those 